Hey, what is up everybody? This is Steven Breach coming to you here today. I was honestly really excited about something that I saw uh, on YouTube today. It was the ending uh, to Impact Wrestling uh, with D'Lo Brown, one of the uh, producers for Impact, um, being backstage. He, he was sitting at his computer. He was having a conversation with somebody saying that he would have to get the band back together, um, get everybody reunited, and uh, go out and, and ride again and as he got up. Uh, it closed his computer. Uh, there sitting on his chair was his aces and eights vest. Uh, you go back to 2000, and, I'm guessing it's 2014, is when aces and eights ran wild over TNA. Um, basically, uh, it was revealed that D'Lo Brown was the vice president of the aces and eights gang. He lost a loser's leave town match. Uh, to Kurt Angle, uh, where he had to leave the group, um, but he was sort of exposed as one of the uh, main players uh, in TNA that was giving them the runaround um, backstage. Um, if they do get TNA, well, I guess if Impact Wrestling, it's still, I, I, I think I'm going to call them TNA until the day that they actually really do die. Um, but uh, if, they, if they really do get Ace and Ace back together, I'm really going to be surprised because mainly you've got uh, Bully Ray uh, involved uh, with Ring of Honor, um, and he also does the uh, the radio gig. Um, I don't know that Ring of Honor works uh, with Impact Wrestling to let them, you know, basically be able to go back and forth. That can easily sort of be, you know, they just smooth that over. They have a new president, uh, whether if you bring bring back Ken Anderson. Uh, and, and, you know, he fought so hard to be the vice president of the group uh, because they wouldn't let him be the, the president or the vice president. That's what ended up leading. Sorry about that. Sales call. But um, uh, basically, Ken Anderson, uh, they wouldn't let him be the president or the vice president of the group. So he ended up going into the feud with Bully Ray. That's what ended up leading to the Aces and Eights being disbanded uh, back in 2014. Um, you know, Ken Anderson got kicked out of the group. Then basically, once he made his return, um, he defeated Bully Ray. Aces and Aids were forced to leave the company, and it was all donezo. Um, after that, maybe Ken Anderson comes back, and he actually is the president of this group this time. Or, you know, they bring back somebody to sort of fill that role. Um, as of right now, uh, Impact Wrestling with Slammiversary coming up. Um, really putting it out there that a lot of these WWE wrestlers um, that were released and that mass release a few months ago due to the coronavirus and then not being able to work house shows. Um, you know, EC3 has already filmed uh, his own video. I can't even tell if that's a TNA video or if he, you know, just took their video and spun it uh, to make him like the main guy in it. But it looks like EC3 really is going. Um, a lot of people think that there's a chance um, that... Uh, the Good Brothers, um, you know, of course, Luke Gallows. Um, he's a stable man, as most people know. Was a member of the Senates. Uh, he, would be, he would be able to, to come in and take over his role, um, bringing uh, Mike Knox with him. Um, Mike Knox, I don't think, is really doing anything in wrestling as of right now. Um, you know, Garrett Bischoff, I'm not sure if he even wrestles anymore. Wes Briscoe, um, I heard he went over and was working for New Japan, but that was five years ago, WrestleMania 31, when I ran into him and he told me that's where he was working, but I haven't heard his name involved with anything in wrestling in a long time. A lot of these Ace and Ace guys, um, but you know, Bully Ray being involved with Ring of Honor, I don't think he's going to be able to come. Devon, he was one of the first guys to, I don't remember what made Devon leave the group, but he wasn't there um, at the end. He lost to somebody. Remember, he was a TNA TV champion who never defended the TNA TV championship on TV. I don't think we ever saw him uh, defend that belt once, once he won it. I don't even know where it went. Uh, I don't even know how he would have even lost it if he never defended it. But um, he's still working. I, I don't think he was one of the backstage producers that got uh, released. I think he was still with WWE. So I don't think he would be able to go. So you wouldn't have the Dudleys. Um, but you can still have the majority of the main guys. This is still kind of surprising because the rumor that came out at WrestleMania 36, WWE was trying to get Nexus uh, to be able to come back to have a Nexus reunion, uh, more than likely for the uh, 
uh, Bray Wyatt uh, versus John Cena match, um, where they could have they, you know, the past creations of Bray Wyatt to come out there and fight the past creations of John Cena. Um, it ended up not coming to be because so many people in Nexus are doing other things on their own right now. I mean, <laughs> Ryback is involved with a, uh, a lawsuit with WWE as of right now with the name Ryback. Um, we've got Wade Barrett working for the NWA. He's Slater. Um, yes, he was working for the company. I was going to say he got released, but, um, you know, I guess he was still there at the time. Daniel Bryan, if they wanted to use him, is still there. Um, I think PJ Black, Justin Gabriel, I think he's an impact, but he might even be in Ring of Honor. He's either in one or the other. But, um, you know, if Ace and Eights comes back, I'll be pumped. I'll pump my fist. I don't think anybody was as big an Ace and Eights fan as me. Um, I went down to Bound for Glory in San Diego. That was 2014. Um, by that time, the band had mostly been disbanded. It was just Bully Ray, uh, Garrett Bischoff, um, Mike Knox, and Taz. I think it was just those four guys that were all that was left of the whole entire group. Everybody else had sort of uh, been released, gone off on their own, or was starting to work, you know, a new gimmick or, or something like that. I will, Ken, Ken Anderson wasn't in the company at the time. He, he had lost the loser leap match and he was sort of on his own. Um, Mike Knox, I think, had been released, but he came back with that whole gimmick later on down the road where he had the menagerie, something like that, where he was a member of uh, the carnival group that was coming back to save the carnival or something that's when crazy steve and rebel came and he got forgotten <laughs> pretty fast but um you know I'll, I'll tell you the truth right now if they come back i'll be pumped i still have the bully ray shirt i still have the ace and eight shirt I, damn i wish i had the ace and eights wallet i wish i had the ace and eights vest um but what it makes me think of is I, I don't know what channel Impact Wrestling is on right now. It's not going to make me find out what network they're on. It's not going to make me watch. Maybe I'll watch some clips, but that's basically what I do with WWE these days anyways. Um, so it's not really going to make me care. It's like the dying days of WCW with the reincarnation of the reincarnation of the reincarnation of the NWO. The NWO that would never die. The fact that Vince brought him back in 2002, thinking that's what people wanted to see when people were telling him we didn't care about it when the NWO got back together in 99. We didn't care when they got back together in 2000. We're not going to care about it now. you got to put some time between this. But um, if they can get Bully Ray in there, if they can get Bully Ray from Impact or, or from Ring of Honor to go to Impact, I'm not going to say that's going to be a game changer, but that's probably going to be the, one of the biggest moves that they make. Because let's face it, you know, they sign EC3, people are going to care for a minute. If you know, Even if they get Luke Gallows, people are going to care for a minute. But Bully Ray leading a heel faction, I think that could be something that is going to happen where people have to see it. Because people remember the Dudleys of the past. The Dudleys will say they will do anything that they want to do. And uh, I think that uh, they can really get that over and make that work, especially with no Hulk Hogan this time. How much did Hulk Hogan and Brooke Hogan ruin the Aces and Eights a little bit? I, I know that that's kind of what tied everything together and made it make sense. Uh, Bully Ray getting married to Brooke um, in the wedding uh, <laughs> with Taz turning. I'll tell you what, that was a stupid turn. It, I, I think it's getting hot in here. And he takes his tux off and it reveals the Ace and Eights vest. Oh, brother, I thought we were friends. And then the big brawl. But, um, damn. <laughs> I remember more of that storyline than, than I think I do. But um, Ace and Eights getting back together. I think it would be cool. But at the same time, I don't think it's going to make people tune in. 